This video is going to be for the ones out there that feel directionless and don't really know what to do with their lives. Or importantly, or are on the process of figuring that out or just uncertain. Let me tell you a story. I'm having a sleepless night. I'm in my bed. It's honestly kind of buggy, damp, and really just disgusting. I can't sleep at all. I'm overthinking about something. A decision that's going to change everything. Go to college. Or become a businessman. I can't decide on which one. I just come back from a college tour from this really great Christian school in Massachusetts. And I actually really wanted to go. I wanted to go because I would be studying Bible stuff. And I would be validated by my parents who would accept me because I took the normal path and the easy path in life. Lo and behold, I never went to college. But I'd spent that night overthinking about the decision to make. Because I felt so directionless, I felt lost, I didn't know who I could go to for the guidance that I needed. I was looking for answers. But I just didn't know where to look, so I was just projecting it all into the universe. And because of that, I can sleep. I spent the next morning trying to decide then when my parents were asking me whether I wanted to go. It just goes to show that we're not our own saviors. When we make decisions for ourselves, when we rely on our own strength and our own capabilities, we tend, to, when we're forced into this situation, when we put ourselves in these situations, it tends to never really go out that well. It never really does that because we act out the whims of our emotions. We're emotional creatures. We're not naturally stoic. Stoicism just... Imagine a rock, a rock in the middle of the ocean. It, when the waves crash on it, even during the toughest, toughest storms, the rock doesn't move. It's not perturbed in any way by the waves just crashing it, hitting it over and over and over again. That's how you should take the approach to life. There's going to be a lot of stuff that comes up. Life is just going to throw a ton of stuff at you. I mean, look at the book of Job, for example. Most faithful, wealthy man, most powerful man in his country. And the Lord takes it all away from him. The Lord gives Satan permission to take everything away. His home, his family, his livestock, his wealth, everything he loses. And on top of that, his friends rebuke and persecute him for it. Life is going to throw a lot of stuff at you and it may not all make sense. But the more important thing isn't what happens to you. The more important thing to consider is how you respond. Are you going to just let life hit you in the face? Are you going to roll the punches? Or are you going to fight back? Because the choice is on you. And I for one know for a fact that before I started fighting back against the BS that life throws at me, I was not living a good life. My life was filled of that BS because I was scared of actually pursuing what I wanted to do, cleaning things up. And the first step I really took in doing that was God encountering me. Our relationship with God really just set me free and lit this spark under my ass and said to myself flat like, I have something to live for now, so I need to work harder. I need to make these decisions sooner. Because I can now. I can make these decisions sooner because I have someone to cast the burden onto. And that someone is God. The Lord knows exactly what we need the reason why he knows exactly what we need is because he's the one that created us and in pretending to our thoughts 
and everything that we've done, thought about, and everything. The thoughts that he's had about those things about us is more than... It, it's a metaphorical aspect of it in the book of John, but it says that the thoughts that the Lord has had about us is more than all of the beaches, and more than every single grain of sand in every single beach in the entire world. Every single tiny little grain of sand. That's billions, trillions, maybe. And that's just the thoughts that he's had about you. Now imagine other people in your life and it really starts to compound. And also consider the fact that God's eternally loving. Like, I never felt truly accepted and loved except outside of my family. The way... Before I like started getting into my faith. Before I'd always look to the world to feel validated. I looked to other people and popularity to feel validated. Because I was, I was insecure. I was lost. I didn't know where to look. And I thought that I could find true love and acceptance in the world. But I couldn't. I only found this acceptance that I needed through Jesus Christ. Because Jesus he's not going to look at you for what you've done. For who you are. For how... Your makeup looks whether or not you have a pimple right here on your in between your eyebrows and say to you you're not worthy he's not that kind of god you don't go to god you don't go to get to get right to go to god you go to god to get right let me say that again you don't get right to go to god you go to god to get right everything else in the world you have to be some some way first you want to be like the popular kids in high school, you gotta be attractive, you gotta drive, you gotta like do all this stuff. You have to fit into that mold. And well, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but this mold, that mold might not be your mold. That might not be your crowd. So what's the best thing to do? The best thing to do is give it to God. Let God answer the question for you. Go through these trials and tribulations of figuring it out, yes, but the caveat to that is you don't shoot yourself in the foot by just pulling yourself in every which way. Because you've got God on your side who's going to guide you in the right direction now. It's really just asking the Lord for guidance every single day. Because when we rely on our own wisdom, when we rely on our own understanding, it almost always falls apart. Because we don't know the things like the way God does. He's all powerful. He's all loving. He knows everything that there is to know about us. More so than we know ourselves. And his love for us surpasses everything of the world. Even our own families, our best friends. Doesn't even compare. God loves you so much more than to let you just go about the whims of your emotions and be just directionless in life. But the caveat says you're responsible for taking that first step and putting that trust in him. And taking it from someone who used to be so skeptical and have so many doubts about this stuff and now and has now given had given it a shot and whose life now has completely changed for the better. I think it's something that's worth taking into consideration. My name's Evan Koal. I'm just some kid that's in love with Jesus, and I hope that me sharing a little bit about the gospel here and towards your goals, towards self-improvement, done the right way through Christ, has helped you and has given you value. But for now, keep working hard, stay blessed, and remember, Jesus loves you. Take care.